Rated everyone. Hello, and welcome to live stream number eight of Grid Two Uncovered. I'm Lee from Codemasters. Joining us this week, back by a very popular demand. This is a hat trick now for you, isn't it, Ross? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, so Ross is back with us. Also back on the wheel, Joseph. Joe. Howdy. How are you How doing? Are you people? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. You? Have you had a good week? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think think then. I think I've been holiday for a couple of days. Uh, Man in the chat box, as ever, is Ben. Say hello, Ben. Hello. And Luke's also in the room with us as well. Man in Twitter. Say hello, Luke. Hello. Okay, right. Um, We're getting pretty close to the end of development now, Rox. What's left to do? Because everybody looks very stressed. <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, we're just trying to make sure that, that all the T's are crossed and the, the I's are dotted. Um, I'm personally uh, working hard on the Japanese version, um, all the conversion for that. So yeah, keep my hands full. But uh, yeah, the studio is still, uh, still a hive of activity. Just making sure that everything's in the, uh, the best possible state for when, uh, for when the game's out there on the shelves. So at what point do you guys all just throw your hands up and then declare you're done? Is that like next week or end of this week? I think when the last of my hair goes grey and falls out, then uh, yeah, that that'll be that. Um, in all seriousness, it's in the next it's in the next couple of weeks. I can't remember when I'm when I'm due to be locked out of the studio uh, without looking at a calendar. But yeah, it's it's not far off now. Okay, right. Uh, this week then, we've got some new stuff for you guys. We've been asking uh, quite a lot on the forums and on Facebook and everything, and you guys have been saying that you wanted to see some more of our pre-order bonus. Um, so we're very pleased to be able to show off uh, the Grand- Brands Hatch GP circuit finally. Uh, we'll be showing that off in the aerial atom, which you can see on screen now. Um, we've also got a brand new track reveal. I think, hang on, is this brand new, Ben? Ben, is that one brand new on my list? What's that? We've never showed that before. No. no, right, we're showing Miami. We've never shown that before, so that's the first time you guys will have seen that. Um, we'll also be showing that off in the Zenvo, which is another car you guys haven't seen. Um, something for, I think a lot of our American fans have also been asking for as well. We'll be showing off the Indy car finally on the Indy Oval. And if we've got time, we might have a special bonus for you at the end. We'll see how we're doing. Um, but yeah, I think kick things off. We'll jump straight into a race on Brands Hatch GP in the Aerial Atom. Legendary circuit. Any driver worth his salt is raced here. Let the front of the pack fight it out on the first corner today, and then take the opportunity. his racing line and pass this guy. The top three is an easy reach now. up with the aggro, pal. You just hit an econo. Thank you. 
push to get a podium finish. Try and make it a win. You just put in a new personal best. That's first place across the finish line. Right, there you go guys, that's the Brands Hatch GP circuit. Um, that's one of my pre-order bonuses that obviously you guys have been keen to see. Uh, the best thing to do, sort of depending on your, I suppose on the country where you reside, if you visit preorder.gridgame.com, you'll be able to see sort of a full list of all the different places that have all of our different pre-order bonuses. So if you've liked what, if you like seeing sort of uh, Brands Hatch there, obviously that, uh, that might be the one to go for. We've also got, um, there was something that sort of come up at the start of the race, Ross, which I asked you about, and then you gave me a very good answer, but we didn't have the microphone on. <laughs> it came up with the thing at the start of the race, and it said one to watch, and it had a guy's name. Um, what is that sort of based on? Is it just throwing up a guy's name as random, or is there some reason why he's the one to watch for that race? When you're, uh, when you're playing through the career against the, uh, the different race clubs, um, every club has uh, what we've called a star driver, and uh, he's the one who will be called out on the one to watch at the start of every race. He, he's the guy who specialises in, in the particular discipline. Um, and then there is also another guy who's you know nearly as good out there with him, who we don't make quite such a big deal out of. But the uh, those guys in the one to watch things is generally the guys who come together in World Series racing as the career goes on. Um, and then uh, also if you're playing in uh, in custom event, then uh, we'll call out someone appropriate there too. So one thing that I've noticed on because we've shown off the obviously these open wheel cars that we haven't shown much of off before. There's a lot of movement at the back, sort of where the suspension is, and things like that. Is that sort of a level of detail that only really applies to these cars, or is that going on almost, I suppose, underneath the hood, if I want to use some <laughs> stupid kind of pun, with um, with all of the cars in the game? Yeah, I mean, um, our, our physics system, I think it, it samples the suspension at something like 500 hertz. Um, so, yeah, it is all going on under the hood, um, as you say, all the time. Um, but, yeah, then once you get into these open-wheel, lightweight cars, you can really uh, really see it, see it happening... Uh, as, as it's going on. Okay, great. Um, so, I mean, when it comes to putting the benchmarks in for, I mean, we, I think we were playing on hard just then. Um, and obviously, we've got Joe doing the racing, he's pretty good, but he still didn't quite manage to win it. How do we sort of decide and set the benchmarks for all of those different difficulty levels that we've got in the game? Uh, well, I mean, it, you, you might be surprised at this, but we actually have a guy better, even better than Joe, who uh, who sets the... Uh, is that the, some guy who's called Neil the Wheel? <laughs> that is Neil the Wheel. Um, he, 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 he sets the uh, the absolute master times. The guy is, is some kind of ninja. Um, and then we, we dial it back a bit for, for very hard. Um, and, I mean, obviously, because our, our drivers and cars aren't just going round the track on a on a line you know they uh, we they're essentially taught how to race and uh, and set a benchmark of how fast they can go different things will happen um, during the race you know people will go wider at corners which will knock knock their times out a bit and uh, and then sometimes the AI drivers will take a great line through a corner and, and appear a bit quicker um, I mean that's something we're, we're really proud of the amount of uh, different tweaks we can make to the AI guys and and they, they feel really human once you're out on track which is uh, why you'll sometimes see uh, Joe not absolutely destroying them at uh, every occasion. 
Okay, right. So, one of these next cars that we're going to be showing off, this one's called the Zenvo. Um, this is a tier 4 car in the game. So, uh, what sort of... Is this something that we're going to get right at the very end? Is this one of the ultimate cars in the game now? Um, it's not right at the very end, um, but yeah, you need to have kind of proved your worth as, uh, as a... a poster boy driver for, for World Series racing um, and once the uh, once World Series goes global then um, yeah you'll start getting access uh, to cars like this um, I think they, uh, they pop up in uh, some sort of the preview events that like we might have seen on previous live streams um, but yeah then eventually uh, you can uh, you can own it so when it comes to modeling cars like this I mean obviously that's not it's not a Ford Fiesta it's not something that's easy to get hold of how do we actually create the car models themselves and get them into the game Oh, um, it kind of depends on uh, on which particular vehicle it is. We're very fortunate that we have um, relationships with a lot of manufacturers. So um, quite often we can arrange with a manufacturer to go to one of their, uh, their factories or the showrooms and have all the reference uh, photography and video done there, and then come back and model it. Um, and then for some of our uh, some other titles, if um, if a vehicle isn't readily available direct from the manufacturer, we'll liaise with people who, who own the vehicles or perhaps museums for, for the classic models are a good example of things like that. I think there's uh, one of the classic Mustangs in, uh, in the game. Uh, we, we sought out someone who, uh, who owned one in pristine condition and, uh, and did all of our reference material based off their, uh, their actual car. Cool. Right. So we're moving over to a brand new track now. This is one we haven't shown before. This is Miami. Um, tell us a little bit about Miami and how it sort of differs from some of the other circuits in the game. Um, well, it's uh, it's city based, uh, so there is the, the potential for uh, for live routes here. I, I don't think we're we're looking at that today in particular. Uh, but no, we're going around Collins Park Ring. Sure thing. Um, Okay, so it's, it's a good route round there. Um, but yeah, when the when the four games out, people will be able to play Miami with live routes. Um, yeah, I mean it's a it's a beautiful place in game. You know, the, the sun's shining. There's uh, plenty of palm trees and uh, and a pretty challenging circuit as well. Right. Okay, Oak. So we'll hop over to it then and be back shortly. Keep an eye on that driver today. Drift driving style. Try to get the car sideways through the bends to maintain your speed.
a shot at a top three finish. Make it happen. Okay, there you go guys, that's Miami. Uh, sorry about the little uh, the little bit of lag we had at the start. Our internet connection went red on the thing and we all panicked for a second, so hopefully we've still got most of you with us. Um, I've had a couple of questions that come in. Uh, first one that's come in via Twitter is from Scorian78. He wants to know how we make it feel as fast as we do. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty fast game uh, from the start of things. But, um, but yeah, what we do is we, we make sure that, that the tracks are surrounded by um, hoardings, people. Um, and then there's also a lot of overhanging um, stuff. Like you'll see the trees, the, uh, the kind of light gantries, street lights, things like that. And um, it all kind of feels like it's a lot quicker than it really is because you've got those frames of references of things flying past you. Um, something else we do is um, a bit of uh, bit of motion blur, 
um, when you're in uh, when you're sort of gunning it at top speed, um, and then um, touch of post processing from our art direction team, and uh, and yeah, that's how it all comes together and looks as, as speedy as it is. Okay, right. Um, if any of you guys have got any more questions, feel free to fire them into the chat box. If you happen to be following us on Twitter, you can also tweet them over to us as well. Uh, our username is at griggame. Um, we've had this other question coming on the chat box, which is from James LLFC. Um, he wants to know why didn't we wait until next gen? Well, we've uh, we've kept people waiting quite a long time already, really, haven't we? Yeah, so yeah, it felt uh, felt like a opportunity. Um, no, I mean, in all seriousness, now that we're we're getting to this stage of of where consoles are, we we really know how to get the best out of them, and um, felt like we'd be able to do all of our plans for for Grid Two justice with uh, with the knowledge we've built up of the hardware. Um, and in addition to that, I mean, uh, there's a lot of stuff where really we're we're next gen now. If you look at the, the graphical fidelity of, of the game and then also all the, the race net integration and all the social sharing that can be done via that, a lot of the stuff that, uh, that people are seeing pop up on the news sites for what's going to be in next gen, we're already bringing to the table. I know we've touched on it a little bit in sort of past live streams, um, but I suppose that race net integration that you just mentioned, what sort of things can people expect from that for those that haven't already heard? So um, after a particularly awesome race, you can uh, capture video of, uh, of your exploits and, uh, and upload that to YouTube. And uh, you can share that with uh, all your social channels um, via RaceNet and will be rewarded um, on RaceNet with RaceNet followers um, for, for doing so. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, RaceNet will generate a whole new set of global challenge events um, every week in game so that you've always got something new and fresh to compete uh, compete against your friends in um, and then in addition to that we've got uh, the RaceNet Rivals system where uh, RaceNet will scour the globe on a weekly basis and uh, look for players who play at the same time as you and are a roughly similar skill level to you and uh, match you up with them so uh, yeah pretty pretty comprehensive hit list there so if I want to add you as um, like a RaceNet rival I've got control over that then and I can what sort of things can I do against you on RaceNet? Well, we, we kind of bring a, a cross-platform uh, competition uh, with, uh, with RaceNet. Like, for example, if, uh, if I'm on Xbox 360, you're on PlayStation 3, and, uh, and Ben's on PC, then we can all, uh, we can all be friends via RaceNet and, uh, and compare what we've done in-game um, on, on the RaceNet web portal. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of bringing together a, a wider player base and giving people more more opportunity to compete against the, the best drivers in the world. Okay, right, so on the screen now we've got one of our pre-order bonuses, um, which is the IndyCar. This is the first time we've ever shown this off. What sort of challenges are there to add in something like a really highly tuned car, like an IndyCar, <laughs> into grid as opposed to adding like perhaps one of the Tier 1 cars? Well, I think uh, I think Joe and Neil have had to learn to see things in in kind of matrix code, and you know uh, <laughs> the odd expression of seeing an ice hockey puck like a basketball. It's it's that with these cars. They're uh, super grippy, super speedy. Um, I mean, it's uh, it's a credit to these guys that they, they can get it around uh, uh, all the tracks as well as they do. Because um, yeah, these things are, are, are top notch. They really are. So, what sort of differences will we see in? like the events that we'll be able to play in this is can we use this car on absolutely anything that we want to in the game or are we just tied to sort of the one track and the one circuit with it yeah you'll be able to use it on uh, on any track in the game obviously some are a bit more challenging than others uh, I mean uh, some of the guys say that if you, you for a real real test of driving ability then uh, some of the point to point tracks in the indie car you know you're really hanging on the edge of your seat uh, with those uh, but yeah you'll be able to race it on uh, on any uh, any track in the game and then if uh, you and your uh, you and your mates have all uh, pre-ordered from the same place and have all got the IndyCar then you can uh, you can run IndyCar races uh, amongst yourselves okay um, so it is worth sort of mentioning this is one of our pre-order bonuses the only way that you're going to be able to get um, both this circuit and this car is by pre-ordering uh, from preorder.gridgame.com um, it will be available as sort of DLC uh, after the game launches as well so if you've decided to go for one of the pre other pre-order bonuses um, don't worry you're not going to miss out on anything you'll still be able to uh, you'll still be able to pick up the indie car and you're not going to be we're not going to lock anybody out of parts of the game or anything like that um, we've got sort of two uh, Two sort of pre-order methods and everything with it going. Uh, if you visit preorder.gridgame.com, like I said, you can see it all there. Um, you can also visit our Steam 
sort of we've got like one of the unlock systems going on Steam that they run. Um, I think we're about halfway through. We're about halfway through now, Ben. Or are we over halfway? We're about 65% of the way through. Um, so the more people that pre-order, the more content you get. I think your next unlock is going to be a copy of Grid 1 uh, on the PC. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. So there you go. You've not gone left to that. And then once you make it to sort of the end goal, you'll have access to all of the DLC uh, if you're playing on PC. And like I said, Ben will drop that into the chat box. I'll be quiet now. Let you guys enjoy the race. Uh, this is the Indy car on the Indy GPs. Uh, on the Indy GP circuit. racing line and pass this guy. you've ever set on this track. Okay, there you go. That was Indianapolis. That that would be quite a lengthy race online if you set that to sort of 500 laps with all your friends, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would. Yeah, it's, uh, you'd have to choose between whether you wanted to watch uh, watch on TV in real life or uh, or do it in game. Um, so when it comes to like the locations and stuff like that, I know obviously this particular route around the circuit that we've just done now is it was just a loop, but there's a lot more going on there with the track. How do we get sort of all of that data for the track? Do you guys have to go out there and visit it and have a walk around, or is it data that's provided by by Indianapolis? Um, it's kind of a, a mixture, really. Um, our our level design team um, always sends someone out to a location to do a research trip. They'll go uh, they'll go along with an artist uh, and they'll take thousands of photos and, uh, and hundreds of hours of uh, video um, and then come back and, and make sure they've got everything accurately modelled down to a T. But with, um, with some of the licensed circuits like this, yeah, we do, um, we do get help from the, uh, the circuit owners and, uh, and yeah, get, uh, get a bit of data from them as well. So yeah, it's, uh, it's another, another good relationship that we have. So is it easier working with a sort of a track like this where you've got all of the information and you have to make sure you get it right? Or is it easier to work on a track, say, like Chicago, where even though it's, it is Chicago, it's kind of a fictional track and we've made it up so we can have a bit of fun with it, which is easier to do? Um, well, I, mean, I think it's probably easier to make 
to make a licensed circuit because you, you, you just sort of kind of make how it is in real life. But um, I think the uh, the level design guys would tell you it's it's more fun to make somewhere like Chicago because we let them have a bit more of a creative license. You know, they can decide on, on the subtle changes in angles of corners and camber and things like that. And if they really need to, they can pull down a block of buildings to make things more fun. So, yeah, one's, one's easier, the other's more fun, I think, is, uh, is how it stacks up. Okay, right. Um, we're pretty much coming to the end of the live stream now. I think, have we got, Ben, have we got time for one more race? Uh, yeah, I'll take one more. Ben says unenthusiastic, yes. <laughs> um, right, okay, I think we should show, I want to show off one of my favourite tracks, actually, um, which is one called the Chicago, uh, it's called the Loop. Um, me and Luke like playing this quite a lot on checkpoint mode. We won't show checkpoint mode tonight. We're just going to do it on a straight race. Um, we're going to do it at night. Um, how? I mean, obviously we've shown quite a lot of tracks at night. There's a lot going on there with the lighting engine in the game and sort of all of the shadows and reflections and stuff like that. Is it? Is that taking up like a lot of power of the game, or is it something that's quite efficient and easy to do? Um, well, I mean, the, uh, the the guys in the bay uh, next to me um, have been uh, been working immensely hard on it for uh, for goodness only knows how long. So uh, yeah, I think I think they've, they've they've sort of developed the tech and refined all of our, our, our work processes and pipelines to to get it as efficient as possible. We're certainly uh, certainly not compromising um, anywhere. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're really proud of how, how the night stuff looks. You, you notice all the fireworks going off and the volume of crowd lining the tracks. Um, yeah, we're, we're really proud of where we've been able to push the game to. Okay, um, we've had another couple of questions coming in via the, um, uh, via the chat box on Twitch. Uh, a few people asking where you can pre-order. Again, uh, you can pre-order at preorder.gridgame.com. Um, we've also got it available on Steam as well. If you guys just log into Steam and search for Grid2, or Ben will probably quite politely drop in a uh, drop in a link on the chat uh, on the chat log. Um, something that somebody's just asked in the Twitch channel. I'm very sorry we didn't catch your name because it's moving that fast. Um, they wanted to know about multiplayer and how many cars are going to be available in multiplayer. Um, on track, we'll have uh, 12 cars um, you can race um, up to, so you and, you and 11 mates all catered for. Um, and then uh, in terms of the number of cars available, um, it's, the, it's the same amount as we have in, uh, in single player. Anything you drive in single player, you can, uh, you can earn the right to, uh, to drive in multiplayer. Um, so one of the things that we've also added um, for the uh, sort of in multiplayer, say if there's only four of us racing, like I just might have four mates online. I've, that might be a bit of a boring race because some of the others might, some of my other friends might be online. But you can sort of backfill the track with the AI. Um, how how difficult is it to get sort of the AI to work online as compared to when it's in the game? Is it all just sort of it's just a case of copying it across, or do you have to allow for more people being on the track? Um, yeah, absolutely. We uh, we do have to make a few subtle tweaks um, and sort of make the make the AI slightly less aggressive. There'd be uh, be a bit annoying if you and yeah you and your mates were out there trying to have some fun, and then you've just got a pack of AI plowing through you. Um, so yeah, there are there are a few tweaks that need to be made. But yeah, you're absolutely right. You can backfill the grid, and uh, you can choose whether to all uh, have have them all the same difficulty setting, or you can choose a, a balanced setting where it will provide a spread of AI. So if uh, if you and I don't know maybe maybe younger siblings or something like that, you know, they you want someone for them to compete against, and and uh, better drivers for you to compete against, then you can get that that spread in the race with you. Okay. Um we're going to show off Chicago in this car, which is the McLaren MP4 12C GT3, which is a bit of a mouthful. Yeah. Um, this is actually another one of our pre-order bonuses, um, a very pre-order bonus heavy live stream tonight. Um, this is probably one of my favourite cars in the game. Like, there's this, and I think there's one called the Gomez, which is a tier down from this, it's tier 3. They're, right. they're my two favourite cars in this. What are your favourite cars? Ooh, um, well, it's funny actually because uh, I saw the prototype version of this car when it was um, still in development. You're right, it is, it is an awesome car. But um, my personal favourite, probably Pagani Huayra. Um, the amount of tech they've got going on in the bodywork of that car is absolutely phenomenal. Um, and then, oh, aside from that... Uh, I do like the BAC Mono. I must admit, um, you know, it's uh, it's got that that open wheel, super grippy, super powerful 
Um, got everything going for it. It's a, it's a fantastic car. Right, Joe, as a man who has spent more time playing this game than anybody else in the right. company, allegedly. Yeah. What is your favourite car in the game? Going as the game, my favourite car to drive and use is definitely the IndyCar. Yeah? So much fun. Oh, yeah. Throwing that car on a track is amazing. I just love that car. So, say we're on multiplayer and it's you're up against me and Ross. It's a tier three race. I'm in the Gomez. What are you going to race in? I have to go with the Aerial Atom, I think. Yeah? Yeah, definitely love the Aerial Atom. Another open wheel grip car, focused, good to drive. Very good. Right, good call. Okay, we're going to hop into our very last race of the evening. Uh, like I said, this is one of my favourites. This is Chicago on the Loop and the McLaren MP4. Uh, I'll let you get on with the race. <laughs>
one second. You've got a five second gap to cover. There we go. That was Chicago in the MP412C. Um, you ran out of flashbacks very quick there, Joe. Well, you, the car's quite hard to control. It's actually a really, really nimble, fast car. It's really nice. But you, you just kick it out too much, you just garnet. It's just, you've got to be really careful. See, now, it's not as easy as it looks. I picked this car and this track because the car's my favourite yeah. and the track's my favourite. Yeah. But it occurred to me that I've never actually put the two together before. <laughs> I normally race the car on the Algarve and I normally do this track yeah. in the... Um, uh, in the Chevrolet, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I, I got I got yeah, caught. As soon as it loaded up, I thought, "Oh, hang on a minute! I don't know how he's going to do." Super yeah. powerful car, thin track, and loads of traffic. Yeah. Joe does have pro skills, though, so I think he did just about all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, just to cover a couple of the things off. Obviously, we've been very pre-order heavy this week. Uh, it was something that you guys asked to see. You wanted to see all of our pre-order bonuses. We haven't got very many live streams left between now and launch, so if there's anything that you guys want to see, all you've got to do is just let us know. Uh, just shout it out if you're still in the chat box sort of after the live stream, drop it in to uh, add a comment on there and um, just just sort of let us know and Ben will keep a, ben will keep a note on them. Um, if you want to, you can tweet them, tweet your ideas for the live stream over to us, which is at Grid Game. Um, by all means, stick them over on the Facebook wall as well, um, at facebook.com slash Grid Game. Um, something that we do have as well, we've never mentioned it, uh, I suppose, sort of too much before in some of the past live streams, but we do have a forum. Uh, there's a lot of users on there that love talking about Grid, so if you've enjoyed sort of seeing what you've seen uh, this evening on the uh, on the live stream, um, swing by onto the forums. Ben will drop a link over to the forums as well in the, uh, in the chat box, and it'd be great to see some of you guys come along. Um, one question that, like I said, sort of keeps popping up is about the pre-orders as DLC. Um, it is something that will be available sort of shortly after, shortly after launch, sort of as soon to launch as possible. There's a couple of different things with like when the PSN store updates and things like that, uh, which might sort of uh, might sort of slow it down. But we will keep you all uh, sort of up to date with that on our Facebook and uh, and Twitter pages. Uh, if you want to see any of our past live streams, uh, best thing to do is swing by youtubecom slash gridgame. We've done, we've covered quite a lot. We've covered multiplayer. We've had the race net guys in. We've got the customization. We've had. There's been two with you guys as well. I can't even remember what we did last week. There's a, uh, there's a race net one as well. There which was some guys from race net. Yeah. I should have made a list. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they're all there on the YouTube page. You just scroll down the page, and it's uh, there's like a section that's called Grid Two Uncovered. That's where we keep sort of all of our live stream videos, and also just sort of our straight replay videos as well. So there might be some stuff that we haven't shown in the live stream. Uh, there's lots of things there that are just straight races on tracks. There's no, there's no flashy slow motion trailers or anything like that. Sort of in that section, you can just sort of enjoy the races as they're meant to be seen. Um, I think that's all we've got left for this week. Yeah, I think that's all. I'd like to thank everybody for coming along. Ben, say goodbye. Goodbye. Luke, say goodbye. Goodbye. Joe, say goodbye. Adios. I'm Ross. Say goodbye. See ya.